test. Wow, that's really loud. All right, so um, our next speaker is uh, me. Um, I'm me, and I'll tell you more about me in just a second. Um, you guys having a good time? How many, how many people were in uh, the last talk right here? How many people's head hurt? Same amount, yeah. I, uh, I just went through his uh, two-day secure switching and routing class. I'm going to probably mumble most of the way through my presentation because of that. Um, just crazy, crazy networking stuff. Um, if, you're, if you're a pen tester, um, you, we, we have to do better paying attention to that networking stuff. Uh, we've missed a lot of bad stuff. So anyway, um, thank you guys for coming to ShowMeCon. Um, I, my name is Tim Fowler. I'm an ethical hacker with Parameter Security, with the host organization for ShowMeKind. Um, when I say thank you for being here, it's really sincere. We put in a ton of work and a ton of effort, but it's really all for you guys. Um, we, we love doing this. It's unbelievably stressful, very, very little sleep. Um, but it's really worth it uh, to, to get the feedback and to, to see the interactions between our speakers and, and all the attendees and the uh, attendees and the vendors and all of that stuff. So thank you guys. I hope you've had a great first day uh, for those 21 and over. We've got the party coming up after uh, these last sessions, and then we'll be back tomorrow for another fantastic, fun-filled day. So um, also, huge shout out to uh, Adrian Crenshaw and Iron Geek. Thank you so much for uh, everything you do. Um, I actually had a goal when I got into information security, and it was to be on his website. Um, and it actually didn't take very long, but it's still one of the highlights of my careers is just finally making it to Iron Geek. So what are we here to talk about today? Um, this is going to be a little different uh, talk than what you're... I normally do technical talks. This is not technical at all. Um, it's going to hopefully appeal to a wide variety of people, and it's going to give you a little bit of unique perspective. How many people here are in charge of actively defending and securing an organization? Raise your hand. All right. How many of you have made the mistake of doing something and be like, it not going quite right? And you're like, well, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. We're all familiar with this concept, right? All right. That's what we're going to talk about today. So. A little bit about me there again. I'm an ethical hacker. Uh, the last or the middle thing, triathlete, is kind of going to be important for the next 42 minutes because um, it's all we're going to talk about. We're actually going to be talking about triathlon and how it uh, relates to being uh, securing an organization. And generally, I'm a good guy to know sometimes, most of the time. So it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. The reality is securing an organization is one of the most difficult challenges that you can face uh, in our prof professional careers. It's hard. Okay, As a pen tester, it's so easy for me to go, here's your problems, here's what you need to do to fix them, I'm done. But the reality is security is difficult because if you could remove the users, remove the software, remove the bureaucracy, the financial burden, the time restraints, probably the network admin just to be safe, you might come close to being able to effectively secure an organization. And being a vacuum, that's, that's really good. Um, yeah, so it's not possible. But what I started realizing is that um, if we're doing this comparison of it's not a sprint, it's a marathon, we're really, really far off. We're missing the bar so much. We're setting our perspectives too low because the reality is, to secure an organization, the better analogy is it's not a sprint, it's not a marathon, it's an Ironman. And so what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the process of preparing, training, and racing an Ironman and how it compares to securing an organization. If there's one thing that uh, I would say embodies both a long course triathlete, specifically an Ironman, or half Ironman, or honestly just a triathlete in general, and anybody that is defending a network, embrace the suck. It's going to be uncomfortable. If, you're, if you sleep well at night, you're probably not doing a good job. Either way, 
whether you're a triathlete or security, it's tough. You're going to have rough days. You're going to have long days. For most part, it actually feels like you're always losing. But the reality is we're still moving forward. We're making progress. I don't want this to be one of those talks that's like, well, if you do X, Y, and Z, your organization will be secure. It won't. There is no cookie cutter solution to security. There's too many variables, there's too many dynamics in play to just sit here and go, yep, here's what you have to do. Um, how many people love being compliant? Okay. Yeah, I, I can give you 82,000 talks on compliance and how compliance doesn't equal security and all this other stuff. Um, at best, it's a bare minimum and things like that. Um, but even then, it's, it's, we're, we're setting the bar too low. We're, we're not looking at things in a holistic manner. Yeah. Anybody, all right, so does anybody know? Uh, so this is, this is my life right here. When I'm not hacking, it's don't drown, don't crash, don't uh, fall. Pretty much. It's really, really simple. As long as I'm moving forward, I'm still winning. Ish. Um, there's a lot of hurdles in triathlon, and there's a lot of hurdles in, in securing an organization. Um, the, the path to Ironman is not straight at all. Um, there are huge bumps in the roads. There's setbacks. There's injuries. There's jobs get in the way, stuff like that. Has anybody ever set out for a security project, timelined it out, budgeted it out, Execute it and it went perfectly. You're a liar if you did. It just doesn't happen. You're going to come in three or four times over budget. It's going to about take 12 to 24 months longer than you anticipated, and it's only going to work 50% of the time. That's the stand. That's actually some of the metrics that we're dealing with, and when it comes to securing organizations, it's just tough. It's really, really hard, and I think oftentimes, especially from the uh, red team, offensive-minded people, we downplay how difficult defending, securing a, a network really is. This is not uh, something that you're just going to decide overnight and make it happen tomorrow. There is no magic blinky box, despite what vendor X will sell you, that's going to solve your problems. So this is, this is actually what I look like most of the time. Um, so there's not a lot of text. We have a lot of pictures. No one just decides I'm going to go run an Iron Man, except for maybe one person, and she's in the back of the room, Stacy Banks, who just uh, finished Iron Man Texas uh, to officially earn her title of Iron Man. Um, she probably could go like, yeah, I'm going to go run an Iron Man this weekend and s survive it somehow. Uh, next month, Lake Placid. Um, so it starts with a mindset, though. Uh, for Iron Man, you have to first identify what your goals are. And your motivations. Why do you want to run an Ironman? Do, do people, and we're going to get into it a little bit more, do you understand what an Ironman actually is? Raise your hand if you know what an Ironman is. All right. For those of you that don't, it's classified as the single hardest one day race in the world. It can last up to 17 hours, and you're going to cover 140.6 miles, 2.4 miles swimming, and less than ideal open water, 112 mile bike ride on rolling hills, and then you get to do a marathon on the end of it just for the heck of it. It's a very, very long day. It's a very, very long process. For many people tackling their uh, first Ironman, myself included, it's a multi-year process. Does that start to sound familiar? Multi-year process for something. This is not overnight. This isn't, I'm going to go run a 5K this weekend. We have that mentality in a lot of our organizations. Oh, we're just going to do security. You don't just do security. You plan security. You test it. You audit it. You constantly do an assessment. You're reevaluating. It's a living, breathing organism. It's constantly evolving. You don't just, yeah, we're just going to go secure the organization. For an Ironman, you've got to figure out why you're racing. Because we all race for fun. Fun, our fun is very sadistic. Painful, hot, sweaty, long hours. Um, about halfway through the run, you're just sitting here going, this is the dumbest thing I've ever done. And then by the time you get to the, the finish line, yeah, let's do that again. Um, you have to figure out whether you have what it actually takes. Not everybody can run an Ironman. 
Um, there's physical limitations to that. Now, if you're familiar with the Ironman, you also know there are an amazing group of athletes that overcome those physical disabilities. Uh, there's the, uh, the para-athlete categories, people that have uh, missing legs, missing arms, W amputees. They're doing these 146-mile races. Um, it's incredible. But you have to figure out, you have to do a self-evaluation, a self-analysis to figure out whether this is actually something for you. There are some people that are great technical people. They can design architecture, they can build out systems, develop software, but they just don't get security. It's just not in their wheelhouse. Um, you have to be able to do a self-assessment, a self-inventory to figure out, do you actually have what it takes? As in an organization, it's simple. What are you protecting? Why are you protecting it? This is the one everybody forgets. <laughs> what is the risk if you don't? And then you still have to ask yourself, are you truly willing to do what it takes? Number one issue with securing organizations, in my opinion, okay, is there is not enough upper management buy-in or sense of responsibility. You can agree or disagree. This is from my perspective. It is very, very hard to initiate these changes when your board of directors goes, it's not a big deal. I don't have a solution for that. I wish I did. If I did, I'd be rich because we'd have very, very secure organizations and very, very engaged board of directors and C-level executives that understand security is their concern. It is their responsibility along with everybody else in the organization. But you have to ask, are you willing to do what it takes? So uh, do you know what you're committing to? Um, you don't simply reach security maturity by happenstance. It's not possible. It's not uh, something that just happens organically. You have to apply force to it. You have to uh, put torque in certain areas. You have to twist and bend you have to change the culture and the paradigm of your organization uh, to be able to reach this security maturity that we're all striving for. Um, and uh, it's tough. It's, it's a huge commitment to, to the people that do it day in and day out. You guys rock. I may tell you otherwise in my pen test report, but you actually do rock. Um, I love you guys. But seriously, dude. You, do you, do you know what you're committing? That's the first thing that people ask me is like, you, you, you do triathlons, like, why? What are you thinking? You know, there's, there's all these questions. Um, and so naturally, with anything, we just overthink it. Um, uh, and we put way too much thought into it. And this is actually a bottleneck for us. Um, it's real easy for, for people to think about training, think about going for that run, that long bike ride. It's, th it's easy for us to think about, yeah, we should be doing this as an organization, but when do we start executing? And this is an issue that we have, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. All right, so we've decided we're going to try to secure an organization slash run a triathlon, uh, Ironman. So it starts with a plan. And in Ironman, the plan is simple. You're going to swim 2.4 miles, bike 112, run a marathon. Pretty cut and dry, except it's actually not, and we'll get into that. Security planning. I can't answer, I can't answer what security planning is going to look like for you guys. Uh, it's all going to be based off of those few questions. What are you protecting? Why are you protecting? And what are the risks if you don't? Uh, every organization is going to be different. Anybody here uh, deal with PCI compliance? All right, anybody here deal with HIPAA compliance? Your security plan is going to look completely different. You're going to have a lot of similarities, but there's going to be some differences. It's going to be based off your organizational structure and the answers to those questions. But you have to start this security planning. You don't just happen into a secure environment. Um, so another thing that's important here is... Uh, we, we haven't gotten to the race yet. We haven't actually started the process yet. We're, we're still in the, the, the lead up. For me, I'm on a two year plan for Ironman, um, which is a very, very long time to commit. Uh, but I, what I understand is that I, I, it, being a former sysadmin, network admin, IT, just do it all kind of guru person, 
I love the idea of like, yeah, I can get that done next week. And then user X happens. Or project B comes up. Or all of a sudden, management has another initiative and stuff. Our timelines are ridiculous when it comes to security. We try to do it really, really fast, which means we do it really, really sloppily. And we're not actually giving it the appropriate timeline that it needs. It's not easy. We need to, we need to refocus on going, this is a long-term thing. It is not a sprint, and it's not a marathon. It is an Ironman, and it's tough. Give it the respect that it actually is. Don't belittle yourself. If, something's gonna, if it's going to take six months to roll out new secure f configurations across your entire network, give yourself the full six months. Figure out a way. You've got, and, and this, comes, this is a management issue. Uh, any any pro, uh, project manager, stuff like that in here, uh, probably don't raise your hand. Um, and, and, I say, and I say that because you guys have a tough job. You're stuck there right in the middle. You've got the, you've got the upper level saying, we just got to get this stuff done. And then you've got the people below it going, I need help. I need resources. I need time. I need money. I need something. Uh, you have to have a plan. But you also have to have a training. Um, do you have the right people in place? Do you have the right resources in place? For training for an Ironman, there's pretty much two approaches. There's the right way and the wrong way. Um, you've got speed training or you have endurance training. Now let's think about this for a second. We're going to go 146 point miles in less than 17 hours. I'm pretty sure speed training is not going to be the most beneficial. Get it done quick, in and out. We're not professionals here. Professionals can finish in and around. The fastest uh, Ironman in the wor world, I think, finished in 7 hours and 46 minutes. Okay? They do a lot of speed training. But it's after they've done the en endurance training. As a company, as an organization, you need to make sure you have the resources. And a lot of this is actually the people that can help go the distance. Okay? If you have a high turnover you're going to have a very difficult time maintaining security. One, because you're sitting here having to always audit accounts, making sure people don't have access, that they actually got uh, removed from the systems and stuff. Do your assessment. Make sure you have the people, the resources in place. If not, figure out how to get them. Um, for security, it's, it's, it's short-term objective or long-term. We had a discussion um, with uh, a bunch of the speakers last night at, down at the buffet with Kevin Johnson, and we brought up the, the point that uh, we had a, uh, a client that had a situation where this user couldn't do this one thing on the network. And what they figured out, for some unknown reason, that the moment they made him domain administrator, it just worked. Okay? The security guy in me is going, what are you doing? Why are you giving just some random user domain administration, because what happens is they realize that's the fix for the problem, that they don't know what it actually is, and so more and more and more users that encounter that problem become domain admins, because it fixes, okay? From a security stand, that's just a bad idea, okay? But here's what you don't know about a situation like that. What if by making that, that, those users domain admins, they're actually able to keep their business running? Because it's a core business function. Okay? This is a problem. It goes in the face of security, but it also keeps the business running. And I can't be like, well, you just need to shut down. I've actually wanted to say that to a few people, but it, it's, bad. it's bad for my business if I just tell clients to shut down. Um, my boss would be like, uh, what are you doing? Um, but yeah, so you, we've got to look at the, that's a short-term fix, making somebody D DA. The problem is, how many people have gone back and removed that domain account or lowered their, those uh, privileges when things settled down? Or better yet, made it back to troubleshoot the actual issue? Okay, It's a short-term fix that becomes a long-term problem for security. You have to... Security maturity in an organization is the ability to weigh these decisions efficiently. Understand that there are consequences for every decision we make in an organization. Doesn't consequences, we always give it a bad rap. It's like it's a negative consequence. No, consequences can be positive. I mean, if the business is running and you're able to process transactions, 
cash flow is coming in. That's awesome. Or we left that account where it was. We spent four weeks trying to troubleshoot it, and now we're going to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. It's a tough place to be in. This is where the organization has to uh, mature as a unit, from the top down and the bottom up. The janitor is responsible for organizational security. The CEO, the CIO, the CISO, the accountant, the payroll specialist, the help desk. Everybody in the organization plays a factor in it, and it takes us all to do it. Uh, triathlon isn't going to train for itself. <laughs> um, my average training week is about 18 hours a week on top of a full-time job. And that's just the actual hours of doing the, ex the, the work. That's not the getting to and from, the countless no loads of laundry and w cleaning God knows how. Water bottle breaking microphones, um, which is a specialty of mine. It's on my resume. Um, yeah, organization's not going to secure itself. Just understand that. If you think it is, take a deep breath. And uh, let's reconsider where we're at in our lives. <laughs> All right. So most people will tell you that there are three disciplines of triathlon. Swim, bike, run. Okay? There's five at minimum. I could actually debate 12, but we're going to talk about five. There's swim, there's bike, there's run. And there's two that's over often looked. And in this analogy... This is where we fail. These next two, we fail in security. The first one's transition, and there's two transitions in a triathlon. You have T1 and T2. The first one is from the swim to the bike. Then you go from the bike to the run. Okay? These are going to play a big factor here in a minute when we're talking about security. And the next one is nutrition. Okay? When you're racing for seven, really anything over an hour and a half, Nutrition is very important, mostly calories and carbohydrates. Intense effort on your muscles drains your, body, your muscles' glycogen stores. If you do not replace them, you are going to do what's called hit the wall or bonk. And it's going to be this sensation of where you physically cannot go any further. You can't move. But oftentimes you will collapse, and you don't know why. Your mind's fine. You're not even that tired, but your muscles, they're gone. The problem is, you can never catch up. It's like anybody had like surgery or something, and they skipped the pain pill because they weren't hurting that bad, and then they could never get back in front of the pain. They couldn't catch up. It's the same thing. Once you have a, once you have a nutrition deficit on the, in triathlon, you have a nutrition deficit the same way you do in an organization. Now, what is nutrition in an organization? It's education. It's training. It's skill sets. It's continuous improvement, uh, per professional development. We're going to get a little bit more into that a little bit. But looking at the di disciplines of security, there are 6,247 bajillion disciplines in security. That's an exact number, and you can quote that. Um, but we're going to walk through some, just some basics of them. And uh, how many people are familiar with the uh, security, like a security life cycle model, like the, the circular thing? We, did, we talk a lot of it in uh, software development life cycle. But there's also just a general security. Um, what you're going to find out, this is the security life cycle, which is this big like you know, ring with arrows. Is This is the exact same thing. It's just in a linear path where there is a defined beginning and end, kind of. So for security, baselining. Okay, what is normal? Okay, I love when I, I, I I'm on with a client. And they're like, well, we saw some abnormal traffic. Really? Did you now? How do you define that it's abnormal? Do you know what normal is? That's the only way you can figure out what's abnormal. Because if you don't what know what normal is, it's all abnormal or it's all normal. You can't distinguish something weird from something normal. Um, you have to figure out what's normal for your organization, what uh, your, the day-to-day -day interactions are, what, uh, how people come and go in, in and out of your building, who does what, who's actually doing their jobs and stuff. You've got to figure this out. You've got a baseline. Um, and then process development. 
is a big thing. How do you actually do something? How do you execute? Um, I used to be a, I hated policy. Policy was the dumbest thing, okay? I am a actions guy, and I'm a technology guy, and a hardware guy. Hardware can solve everything. I don't believe that even close to it more. Standardization. How do you do something in an organization? How do you deploy a workstation securely? Start working on these process developments, figuring out, defining w the ways you're going to do things. This is where you start at. Uh, introduction to technology and solutions. There's going to be a big asterisk here. Um, this is the part that just scares me to death when it comes to security. Uh, execution. You've got a process. You've done process development. You have uh, these technologies and solutions. Now you actually have to execute on those those processes and stuff. And this is very difficult. Um, education. Here again, this is nutrition. Nutrition. Your employees, your staff, your managers, your C levels, your janitors, everybody. They need to have a constant source of security calories being injected into them. Okay. It, you have. It's an echo chamber. Keep talking. Eventually, hopefully, we can all pray that it'll stick. You know, if you can get that one user that's always going to click that phishing email to just stop for a second. You're winning. Celebrate the small battles, the small victories, because it's a long war. Assessments, internal, external, doesn't matter. We've got to be doing these. How do you know that your processes are working? Well, it's not broken, right? That's, that's a lot of people's answers. Our stuff is working because, you know, we're able to do our business. But is it working right? So, all the pictures from here are all, there. it's all triathlon, so bear with me and stuff. Um, I love this picture. Uh, this b picture of the bike, these are little gel packs. They're basically like pure um, glycol and something. It's just sugar. It's just sticky, sticky, sticky sugar. Um, they're about 100 calories of concentrated uh, energy. I'm pretty sure this guy was doing like a five-mile ride, okay? <laughs> A little bit overkill, okay? But let's need to say he is well prepared, although I'm afraid that he may actually have a wreck uh, when he's actually trying to do all this stuff. This other guy here, um, he looks pretty rough, okay? He's bonked. He's hit the wall. He's not going to finish the race, okay? That's a look of a guy that's defeated, okay? In this particular case, it was because of the heat and poor nutrition. Um, Start early, start often, or else you will fail. Okay? Invest in your people, train them, instill security awareness and a security mindedness in them. Okay? You get new people, you're hiring new people, get security involved in the process of hiring, get them involved with HR. Understand. Has, has anybody ever gone through, and, and this may be a little bit tough crowd to get this because we're in security for the most part, but have you ever been asked about, like, espionage in, in an interview by HR? Like, whether you would give company information out or what situations are acceptable? Why not? Why, aren't we at, why are we not actually going? We need to have security-minded employees because it's all of us. And I know this is, I'm living in a dream world. I understand that. But I figure if we shoot for here, we're down here under the stage, and we can get to here, we're winning. We're doing better. That's the whole goal. We have to do better. One of the things I like about HIPAA the only thing I like about HIPAA is HIPAA awards for effort, continuous improvement. And I think it's huge. Okay? If you're making the effort, if you're doing something better today than you were doing yesterday, you're winning the battle. All right. So this is just funny. Uh, so we're going to ride. You're at this, so what we've done on the prep, we're going, about, so we're going to start the race. We're going to get to the start line. It's a mass start. 
for uh, most Ironman. And what that means is you have 2,000 plus athletes jump in the water at one time and swim 2.4 miles. It's fantastic in your worst nightmares. Uh, if you're claustrophobic, you're screwed. It's, it's awful. Uh, so if you look in this bottom right-hand picture, that's the washing machine. Okay. If you imagine taking everybody in this room, putting on wetsuits if the water's cold enough, and then throwing us into uh, a washing machine for the next hour and 25 to two hours, that's what it's like. There's punching, there's kicking, there's rib poking, kidney punches, face smashes, all of this stuff. It is violent. It is, it's like WWE in the water. It is awesome. Um, but it's, it's, all, it's brutal. And this is how you start your 17-hour day. Sound like most of us day one uh, on our jobs securing an organization? It's like getting sucker punched, okay? It's tough. It's choppy. It's, I'll get out. What you have to do is you have to persevere for about the first 500 meters. Once you get between 500 meters and a kilometer out, things start to thin out. The fast guys, well, they're way ahead of you now, okay? And the really, really slow guys are just on my feet. Um, <laughs> actually, I'm in the worst spot. I'm dead in the middle. I, it, it's, it's awful. But it starts to thin out. It starts to settle down. You've got to make it through that rough patch, and then you're able to settle in. You're able to get in your stroke, and you're able to just hold your own. Well, for security, man, this is, this is where it gets choppy. It gets so choppy so fast. And I'm not sure we ever, as organizations, make it out of the chop. We're not making it out of the baseline. And as organizations, we're trying to run before we get out of the water. Just, or we jump straight, you know what, let's forget the swim, we're going to go straight to the bike. It doesn't work that way. You have to do this baseline, you have to do this, you have to figure out where you're at. You have to do that inventory. Uh, swim, they said, it'll be fun. Baseline. All right, Sands top 20. What's the top two? Come on, y'all know it. Inventory, Sands top 20. Critical controls. Inventory your hardware, inventory your software. 2A, inventory your people. Okay? It's where you start. You have to know what you're responsible for security. And if you don't, go back to the water's edge, jump in and try again. Um, I wish this is how it actually worked, uh, that you could do all three legs at one time. This is our, the 2016 security model of almost every organization. We're going to swim, we're going to bike, and we're going to run all at one time. We're going to do our baseline, we're going to do our implementation process to, uh, change, and we're going to try to run and maintain all at one time. And it's going to be fantastic, and we're going to be successful, except we're not. In the baselining stage, when we come out of the water, this is what we look like as organizations. We have been beat to death, punched, kicked, nearly drowned, and we've barely survived, but we're out of the water. Okay? I, I mean, honestly, this is about the best representation of, I can think, I, I love this. Okay. Then we get to transition one, and I'm going to fly through this. See all those bikes? You don't get just to pick one, I found out the hard way. I was like, oh, that one's nice. Uh, no, not really. Um, you get into transition one, and this is where things can start to go really, really wrong. You have to get out of your swim gear, get ready, get out on your bike. This is where we fail as an organization, and I'll tell you why. All right, the second leg is the bike. Okay, This is my bike, and I'm going to go on an absolute nerd rant for just a Quick second. This is a 2015 Scott Plasma 20 with zip full carbon 808 wheels, power tap C1 chain rings, uh, zip uh, tangenti brake pads, uh, Altegra rear cassette 1128, front chain rings are a 5239 now? Um, no, 5239 um, on this particular one. And uh, yeah, so this is my bike. And I just spat it off a bunch of details. You know every single one of those details matters to me. Nobody else can ride that bike like I ride that bike. Why? Because it's fit for me. It is custom fit for me. Okay? 
if I went and just grabbed a bike out of transition, it's going to be a really long ride and really, really comfortable. So the problem is we're making this, yeah. <laughs> this is what happens. We come out of transition, we start looking at technology, going, oh, we're going to use technology to help solve these problems. And we hit the ground running exactly like that. Okay, we fail. Why? Because we don't have the people, we don't have the knowledge, we don't have the nutrition, and it just doesn't fit. Okay, stop buying it because vendor X says this will solve your problems. Who knows your organization better than you? Certainly not the vendor. Definitely not the salesperson. Do your due diligence. Find the solution that best works for you. Um, I, I, I thought technology would solve everything. It really doesn't. Okay, it's rough. Um, it, it's technology actually causes more security problems than a lot of times it solves because we do it fast. We implement it fast. Perfect example: uh, the the router class. We found a, a switch deployment that was done fast, and I could set up a TFTP server and bring down the entire casino network because of it. They got technology, but they did it in a hurry. Because they didn't have the right nutrition, they didn't have the right plan, and they end up falling on their face like that. So the bike ride sucks. Okay, it's 112 miles. It's always hilly, always hilly, and uh, it's going to be windy. And if you're lucky, you're going to get in a rain and a hailstorm. Um, imp technology implementations are about the same way. This is how they were sold. This is how they actually work. Good luck trying to get from here to there. Um, but this is what we battle. So we get through, we implement technology solutions. Understand, when I say technology, this could be process changes. This could be uh, simply modifying how we do. This is where the, the, the crux of things actually happen. Now we're through our baseline, we're through um, the bike, and we're about to go on the run. Okay, This is where it sucks. Because you have to maintain. It sounds easy. You have to maintain. Um, and this is this is the most awesome thing I've ever seen in, in triathlon because it's so true. Um, the run course is always flat in your imagination. Okay, it's bumpy. This is a crazy, crazy ride that we're on and run as an organization. It's tough. It's hard. Okay, we're gonna go just a little long. <laughs> um, but it's tough. You've got to maintain. You've got to keep taking your nutrition. Okay? You've, you've got new technology. Let's be honest. When you go buy that really, really awesome next generation firewall, how much of your budget went to training your entire staff to run it? That's what I thought. You've just set yourself up for failure. Because now you're entire staff is operating at a calorie deficiency. They are responsible for something and they don't have the skills to do it. So why did you implement that technology specific? These are questions that we've got to ask. Um, yeah, run harder, you'll be fine. Just, just, just push through. That's all we have to do is push through, right? No, it's not. It, understand, it's not easy. I, I can't, I, I'm just, that's my whole thing. Embrace the suck, it's not easy. You guys, I, you are rock stars for even A, sitting through this talk, and B, actually doing this on a daily basis. I, could, I got out of it. I went to the easy side. So you're almost done. You're finished. This is the 1997 Ironman World Championships. Okay, this is, one of these two women is going to win the World Championship. Okay, this is the, they are 145 miles in, and they are on their hands and knees crawling. This is what securing an organization actually feels like. Unfortunately, we want it to be like this. It doesn't work. And uh, then you cross the finish line. You're done, right? Woo! -hoo! Awesome. You've just completed your first Ironman, or you've achieved the security, maturity, and maturation in your organization. Now what do you do? Well, for security, there is no finish line. Uh, you better bring toilet paper. You get to do it again. As soon as you cross the finish line, you complete that project, you go stick your toes in the water and wait for the start gun to go off again. It's a cycle. 
It never ends. And unfortunately, guys, I'm sorry, it never gets easier. We just learn how to suffer even more. It's sadistic. Uh, and then we just rinse and repeat. Do it again. All over. Um, I think this last one. Yeah. So that's it. You know, it's... Iron Man's tough. It's brutal. It's mentally challenging. But honestly, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life is try to secure an organization. It's tough. It, it takes everybody. We've got to change the paradigm. We've got to change the responsibility. It's not just my responsibility. It's all of our responsibility. We've got to have the proper nutrition. We've got to do the steps in the right order. We've got to stop running before we get out of the water. It's just got to happen. I don't, and I don't have the answer to how we make it happen other than let's just keep trying. Let's keep poking away. I'm going to keep pen testing. I'm going to keep making re recommendations, but I'm going to do it from the perspective is I know it's not easy. Okay? That's my, that's my commitment to all of my clients is I'm going to put myself in your shoes for at least one day while I'm writing those reports and going, here's what you should do. Now let's get down to brass tacks. You need to focus on this right now and hope you can get to everything else later. It's just the way it works. So that's all I've got. Any questions, comments? It's not, you know, it's a, uh, it, it is what it is. Uh, security embrace the suck. So.